blue mission for all humanity. For the black woman. What this world really needs is a spiritual revolution. Society need regeneration. So though I speak with the tongues of angels and the men and have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries. Though I have faith that can move a mountain without love, I am nothing. Hi, I was born in South East London in a time when the country was going through a lot of changes, the UK. There was a lot of black people coming into the country. My family was one of the first. And we lived in a real kind of rough area. And uh, me and my brothers, we grew up, we fighting all the time. Our parents split up when we were younger. And so can you imagine, there, there was a lot of chaos in, in my youth. There was a lot of gang violence, a lot of war, a lot of problems. And as we, we grew up, me and my brothers, we, we, we basically fought for our kind of lives. We were just always fighting. And there was a, an atmosphere in South East London of, of violence. There was a, a lot of gangs, there was a lot of um, criminality. It was a criminal subculture. And in this atmosphere, uh, me and my brothers began to forge out a name for ourselves. We became, you know, people knew who we were. We weren't the aggressors, but we were people who could handle ourselves. And we were always kind of involved in little violences and stuff. And, um, but the life we were living was so violent. I remember one night, my brother was stabbed in his hand. You know, another time I got cut in the wrist. Uh, you know, there was always something happening with the skinheads. There was the, the far right skinhead movement at the time and we were always involved in something with those people and they were always trying to chase us and, you know I lost count of the amount of times we were we would run from them or we would chase them or you know there was a big confrontation every couple of weeks there was, there was a season in the early 80s when there was just every week there was just some kind of fight this is Tilbury a grey desolate place with an evil stench of violence where local skinheads roam the docklands like cropped rats. So said the Sun newspaper in a special August bank holiday spread entitled Agro Britain. And out of this I began to um, realise, you know what, I need, to, I need an escape route. And so I began to do music, I, I began to sing, I began to impress a girlfriend, we wrote music and I began to sing it to her and we did music at late night sound systems. And basically, I began to get notoriety for being a local kind of celebrity. And around about this time, I met some people who knew some people, who knew um, some quite famous people. And I started hanging around in totally different circles in central London, hanging out with um, Boy George's brother. Boy George was a singer who was quite famous at the time. I started hanging out with his brother and friend of his, Peter. And uh, these guys, they, they had access to nightclubs and they would have access to drugs and they had access to all kinds of different situations and I was taking drugs by now. I'd met Karen, she was my girlfriend, we were living together, we had a couple kids. I was living a very fast paced life. And anyway, to cut a long story short, by the time I was about 22, 23, I'd met a very influential music producer. This is a guy, his name was Kent Brainerd. He had, uh, in, he had introduced me to Seal and these different singers and he was producing music for Mick Jagger, for Madonna, I mean this guy was big leagues. And he became my manager and we began to work on an album and we were working on this for a couple years and you know, the record company was very excited about us and I was walking through South East London in 1990 and a girl came up to me, a girl who I knew from school. She said, Ernie, Ernie how are you doing? I, I spoke to her and she said, um, basically, where would you go if you die right now? She said, I, I got saved. She said, I started going to church. Jesus Christ is real. She said to me, you need to repent of your sins. She said, what's missing in your life is Jesus. And I could not forget what she said. 
For six months I wrestled with the words that she spoke. Uh, six months later, to cut another long story short, a friend of hers came to me and spoke to me about Christ and I couldn't resist the Spirit of God. I said, this is real. What these people have is real. I know it's real. I want it. And so I just said to them, what do I have to do? I, I said, what must I do to be saved? I literally said those words. And this girl said to me, you need to repent and ask Jesus to be your saviour and ask him for forgiveness. And I did that. And as I did that, all the, the fronts, all the pretense, all the, the, the attitude, it all just left me. And I was just like, man, I got saved. I felt clean. I felt like God has touched me. And I started, I went around, I went about telling all my friends. I started talking to them. Every one of my friends, I told them, well, you all need to come to church. This is, this is important. You need to come. One by one, they all started coming to church. They all started giving their lives to Christ. They started coming to the church in London. And at this point, that church in London, in Walthamstow, started to explode. People started to come from all over London. Uh, we started doing concerts. I started doing music in the church. I probably shouldn't have done this, but we, you know, we have a policy in our fellowship of, you know, six months, sit in church and then you can sing. But I almost straight away, I started getting up on stage, singing, doing concerts. At, at one point, there were like a thousand people coming to a, a building that was only designed for about 300. I mean, it was just, sweat was dripping off the ceiling. Japanese film crew were coming, filming us. People from uh, the BBC were filming us. They were like, what is going on in this church? Young people were getting saved. And out of that group of young people, God was establishing the UK fellowship because a lot of those young people became pastors, leaders. I became a pastor. Uh, we all began to go all over the world. A friend of mine, success out of Shida, he went to Nigeria. Uh, other friends of mine went to different nations all over the world. We split up and we, we began to do something for God and I became a pastor. I went out to um, Northampton. I started uh, to preach the gospel. I've been preaching now for 16 years to, and again, this is not something I say lightly. The wisest move I ever made was giving my talent to Jesus. Because let's think about it, what happens in the music business? If you, if you, if you make a couple of songs, you get famous, you do a couple of albums, you make some money, you go around the world and then after a, a short period, 18 months, you are yesterday's news. No one is interested anymore. But by giving my life and my talent, my, whatever I have to Jesus, he's used it for years and years to save sinners. People come up to me and say to me, your music was influential in my salvation. And that to me is worth more than anything that I gave up in the music business. And uh, amen, that's my story. I'm, I'm only topping, this is only topping. Signing off. Shake the baby, shake the baby, shake the baby, shake the baby, shake the baby.